Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Today, we're going to conclude our study of the great book of Philippians with the fourth chapter. Philippians chapter 4, the very first verse, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. He says in verse 2, I beseech Eodias, which means I beg or I urge Eodias, and I beseech Centrite, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Verse 3, and I entreat thee also, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Now here is Paul expressing his concern and love for the church. He truly loved the brothers and sisters in the body of Christ and we should love them as well if we're truly disciples of Christ. Regardless of whether they belong to a, a non-denominational church or a denomination, we should love the church because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves the world. And the ones that he has enlightened through his spirit to come out, they make up his church, okay? These are his adopted sons and daughters, and we should see ourselves as one universal family underneath God. And so Paul expresses his love for them, in the beginning of this portion of the letter, and he encourages two sisters who were having disagreements that they would be of the same mind in the Lord. See, the Lord wants us to dwell together in peace. Eodius and Centrite, he names them. He says that they be of the same mind. I, I'm begging you to be like that. And then he says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Now, the word entreat, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it, they compare it to the word to mean to interrogate, but he says by implication to request. So he said, I'm saying to the men in this congregation that these women who have labored with me in God's eyes are just as important as men. And this is important because there was a lot of chauvinism in that time and the women were not treated with a lot of respect. So here is Paul allowing them to know that in Christ, it's not supposed to be that way. He says, I want you to help those women who labored with me in the gospel. They're just as important as the men. And so that's why in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, Paul, being guided by God's Spirit, had written, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 28. There is neither Jew 
nor Greek. There is neither bond, which means a slave, nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So in the body of Jesus Christ, we are one. So Paul wants them to understand that these women are important, and just like them, their names are written in the book of life. Okay? He says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The word rejoice, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, is 5463. It's a primary verb, meaning to be cheerful, that is calmly happy or well off, and personally, especially a salutation of greeting or parting, and at the end, the word they have, be well. So he say you should always be cheerful. Now somebody who's going through some difficulty in this life might say, why? Well, when you understand the gospel message, it is a cause for always rejoicing. Right now we are in a sin-sick world and we're suffering the results of sin, which is a slow death. We're growing old every single day. We're decaying. And one day our body's going to break down to the extent where it won't function anymore and we're going to die. And that's not a good thing. That's a terrible thing. People are very sad when they lose people they have shared life with, this temporary life with. So when you understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of that Savior that God sent forth. That's a reason to rejoice. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He says in verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So not only did God rescue us from sin, he rescued us from the wages of sin, which is death. Now people think death just means you're going to cease to exist and you're going to die. No. He also saved you from the second death, which would have been judgment for your sins and being tossed into a lake burning with fire and brimstone for all eternity. This is what God has saved us from. This is what the gospel is all about. When Jesus came and shed his precious blood at Calvary, that's what he made possible. And when you understand that, that is the ultimate reason to rejoice, that Jesus saved you from dying the first death and going into the second death, which is the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. Nobody has to go there because of what Jesus did. Thank you, Jesus. And then I just praise you. I magnify your holy name. Thank you, Jehovah God, for sending him to be that one. Thank you, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that's a reason to always rejoice. No matter what you're going through in this life, Christ saved you and made it possible for you to experience life on a level that we cannot experience now. Eternal life in a world that will never end a whole brand new existence. You're going to have a different body. You're not even going to have the same body. You're going to be like God. This is what God has made possible. And when you understand that, that is a reason to rejoice. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, he says, Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. That word moderation means mild. You know, you should be, when you understand these things, you should be at peace. That's what he's saying. Let your moderation be known unto all men. No matter what you go through in this life, it's nothing compared to the glory that's waiting 
on the other side if you accepted Jesus and if you live for him. And that's why after he says, let your moderation be known unto all men, he says the Lord is at hand. He's coming. He's coming soon. Verse 6. He says, be careful for nothing. That word careful is not like our English word careful. But this word careful, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, means to be anxious about. So he says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. He says, just relax, chill out. Don't, don't be anxious about anything. This is all a temporary situation. This ain't nothing but a bad dream. And when we die, if we die for Jesus, we're going to wake up from this bad dream. And the, and the apostle says these things will never be brought to mind again in Revelation chapter 21. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He said, the Lord will answer those prayers and he will grant you a peace that cannot be disturbed. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, Paul, being guided by the Spirit, had these words written. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, which means fair or righteous, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And that word virtue, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, is number 703, the Greek word coming from a Greek word meaning manly or valor, that is excellence, intrinsic, or a tribute. That's why you and I ought to learn this book. And we ought to meditate in it day and night. And if we do, it's going to be a tremendous blessing to us. I want to flip over to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. He says, meditate upon these things, the word of God. Give thyself wholly to them, completely to them. That thy profiting, that your profiting may appear to all. You're going to profit from the word. You're going to take in God's knowledge. You're going to apply it to your life. And people are going to see that you're at peace and that you're being blessed. He says in verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, which means teaching. Continue in them, for in doing this thou or you shall both save thyself and them that hear thee. Not only will you cause yourself to receive eternal life, but the people who receive that gospel message that you share with them. Now this is vital, brothers and sisters, because there's a whole bunch of people who go to church, or what they call church. Actually, the church are the people who meet in the sanctuary or the buildings that they go to worship. Anyway, they go there and they listen to the word of God and, and they rejoice and they, and they praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Some of them carrying on. <laughs> and then they go out and they just live like a devil, like they didn't hear anything. That's why Paul says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. You got to be a doer of the word, James says, and not a hearer only, because if you are, you're, you're deceiving yourself. You got to do what the Lord says, and then you will have God right there with you, backing you and supporting you. If you and I are down here living like a devil, God is not with us. God is not with us at all, and we're on our way to hell, too. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein ye were careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Now he's talking about how these brothers and sisters in this church in Philippi sent a love offering up there to help him with the ministry and to help the poor saints in Jerusalem. 
He says in verse 11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So he says, don't think I'm trying to collect some money for myself, like you see all these false prophets doing today. He says, I've learned how to be content in whatever state God has me in. And that's the way you and I are supposed to be. We're not supposed to be materialistic, worldly, greedy, money-grubbing people like these false teachers who have these big estates and these private jets and all this mess. They're setting a terrible example of what God is about. So Paul says, I've learned how to be content in whatever state God has me in. He says in verse 12, I both know how to be a base, that means to be humbled, and I know how to abound, how to increase. Every way and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He says, the Lord tells me, if I want to bless you with something, I'll give it to you. You don't have to pursue it. And if I don't, then you just do without it. And that's the way true Christians live their lives. He says in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You see, Christ is the power source. Philippians 4, verse 14, he said, Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. You've done a good thing by sending this help up here. Okay? I want to make sure you don't get confused by what I'm saying. He says in verse 15, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. He says, when I left from Macedonia, you were the only one who sent some money to help me with the ministry. He says in verse 16, for even at Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. So he's thanking them for their generosity, sending money to aid him in the work that he was doing for the Lord. Okay, and it's very important that you and I pray to God to direct us in our giving. And it's not always money. Sometimes it's your talent and your time. So make sure that you ask God to direct you in what he wants you to do. Philippians 4, 17, he says, not because I desired a gift. He says, I didn't want any money for myself. He says, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. He says, I want you to be blessed by God for giving to his cause. So you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for the Lord. Unlike the false teachers you see today, they're taking that money for themselves and, and buying name brand clothes, very expensive clothes, diamond rings and watches, just like the unsaved world. So this is a different thing because they'll take these scriptures and try to twist them. He says in verse 18, but I have all that abound. I am full. Having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. So he says, I have plenty. I don't need anything else. I am very grateful for what you saints sent to me for the purpose of the gospel. That's what he's saying here. He says in verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God's going to bless you for what you've done. You know, the things that you sacrificed and gave to me, you're going to get it back tenfold. And he doesn't necessarily mean in this life. He means eternal life. That's, that's what he means. A lot of times when you see in the scripture where it says God's going to repay you, he means in eternity. I'm not saying that he couldn't give some of it back now, too, because sometimes he does. Paul says in verse 20, Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. 21, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. That means greet them, say hello to them, hug them, whatever the custom is. Greet your brothers and sisters. The brethren which 
are with me greet you. Paul says, I want you to understand that we are united. This is just not my letter. This is all of our letters up here, and we all greet you. That's what he's saying to these saints in Philippi. 22, all the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household, even the uh, ones who have been converted while I'm locked up here in the palace. These new brothers they greet you as well. We are one universal family in God. Paul wants them to understand, and he wants us to understand. And then he ends the letter with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zell, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.